So have you ever wondered what color the Google logo is, or for that matter, any other graphic element on your screen? There's a tool that's provided naturally within macOS that will allow you to capture that color to use in your further applications and graphic designs. Hi there. I'm going to show you one of macOS's most useful tools, especially for designers and any, anybody who's creating any graphics or text and you're working with color. If you're a designer or a creative user, this tool is essential for you to be able to use. Typical uses would be to capture any color on the screen so that you can use it on your web design, your page design, or even as a video graphic. This fantastic tool is called Digital Color Meter, and this is the icon that you'll see. So Digital Color Meter, it allows you to capture color information for any color displayed on the screen. You could even capture the color of this blue graphic on this video right now if you were using the Digital Color Meter built within macOS. This helps creators quickly capture those colors in designs and color match elements and text. For web and graphic design, or simply to know what the color value of any element is, Digital Color Meter is your friend. Now, I know that there are eyedropper tools in a lot of graphic design programs, but often these will limit you to using the eyedropper within the windows of the design itself. Digital Color Meter will measure and give you graphical information about any color displayed anywhere on any of your screens. It's built into macOS Catalina and Big Sur, and you'll find it in the Applications or Utilities folder. If you want to find it quickly, do a spotlight search, which as you know is Command Spacebar, and then just type DIG, the first few letters, and it should come up with Digital Color Meter. I'll show you that right now. So it's important that you keep Digital Color Meter as the foreground application whilst you're doing any color measurements, or you might find that some of these key commands do different things in different applications. So just try to make sure that that's the case. So whilst I look at the um, magnification, you can see we're on four times, and as I move the cursor over the G, we can see a little bit more of the G in the window. If I bring digital man color meter to the foreground again, and change the magnification to one times, then we can actually read Google quite clearly in the screen. The area that it is sampling is marked by that black dot right in the center of that square area there. I'll just try and highlight that for you. Right in that area is where we're looking and in the center there's a black mark showing the red O of the Google that, uh, that we're actually sampling. And again, just to reiterate, if you want to lock a color, then you simply press Command L and that will lock the color for you. And you can then move around the screen and take a note if you need to of the color values. But there's a feature that allows you to capture that and I'll show you that in one moment. So let's go back to the view menu and i'll go back to magnification eight times and now once i've unlocked it i'm able to then look into this color if i lock the position once more i just want to show you another feature and this is the aperture size so this aperture size at the moment is quite large i can reduce that down and as I show you it, I need to unlock the position once more for it to work. And you can see quite clearly that the aperture size is much smaller now. So you can increase that sampling area or reduce it to a single pixel. Okay, the larger your aperture size, the more pixels it captures. So you can tune this aperture to the size of the graphic that you're trying to read the color of. If you simply want to read the color of a thin line, then you'd probably keep it on one pixel. 
and this will allow you then to just monitor one pixel as you see I'm just rolling along that straight line here and I can monitor the color of that particular gray pixel in the graphic there. Now let's show you a few of the other really useful features of this tool. One thing that we can do is we could check to see what the color of the blue elements of the Google logo are. So in sRGB on my screen, it's showing me that it's R65, 133 and 244 for the RGB elements. If I move over to the G, then we can see that it's exactly the same. R65, 133 and B244. So we know the two blues are exactly the same color. If I move over to the red O, the first O of Google, it's red 234, 66 and 53. And I move over to the E and we can see that it's 234, 66 and 53. So we know that those two colors are exactly the same. And we can monitor any color, as I said, on a screen uh, using this tool. And we simply look in the square box here to see that we're actually exactly on the color that we want to be and sampling as many pixels as we need to. Within the digital color meter box, you've also got some additional tools. So here we're displaying as RGB, but if you know anything about color management, RGB values are dependent upon certain profiles. So the native profiles, let's go for those first. Native profiles of the green L, because I've sampled the green L and locked on it. These values are taken from the profile of the screen that I'm actually reading from. So I've calibrated my screen, which you should all do if you're using anything graphical, making videos, doing photography, being a graphic designer. If you're serious about color, then you should always calibrate your screen. These values here are based upon the calibration of my screen. So that's what native values are. P3, as you may know, is the screen space for iPads and iPhones and the new Mac screens. It's a wider color gamut than sRGB and is becoming more and more used in the web space as well. So the P3 color space is a wider space and can be used if you are wanting to work with advanced designs. sRGB, the traditional color space for the internet and for general monitors, that's what sRGB, standard RGB is, and you get the color values for that. Then you just have a generic RGB, which is just a generic profile that's, uh, that's available for you. Then you've got Adobe 1998 RGB. Often you'll see 1998 in brackets here. And this is a wider color space, but here are the RGB values for that color space. And finally, we can actually display LAB values as well. So this is really useful if you want to match a color in a different color space, such as CMYK. You might be able to type in these LAB values and transfer that into a completely different color space. Very useful for you. So how do you capture those colors? Well, the way you do it is quite easy. And what you do is you go to the color option and you can see a shortcut there that says copy color as text. So the copy color as text command is shift command C. If you press shift command C, and I'll do that right now, actually what I'll do is I'll capture sRGB first. So it's 51168183. If I press that command, that has now captured those values for me. Just to show you that, I will type them or I'll paste it into this window here, just so you can see it. So there we are, 51168.83. So that will go into your graphical program if you want to. So whichever mode of color that you are on, 
digital color meter, if it's in the foreground and you do a capture, will capture those values for you. So just as an example, if I go to LAB and I capture the text as uh, the color as a text and I go into here and I paste so command V so we can then see that it's 61 minus 47.89 and 34.17. So that's what capturing the color as a text will do for you. Let's bring it to the front once more. The other thing that you can do is copy the color as an image, which is Alt Command C. There we are. Ah, Alt Command C anyway. And that will capture the color and allow you to paste it into a graphic application as a square box. It's really quite clever. So if, for instance, you've got Keynote or Pages open or another design software, it will place a square box of this particular color with those values into your design. And finally, what you can do is you can use the color meter to display hex values, which is commonly much more useful if you're a web designer or dealing in some applications that deal with RGB, they often have a hex box that you can complete. So that's under the display values area. And the display values won't be highlighted unless you are on a normal RGB profile. So as LAB, the LAB values never change. So you need to be on an RGB. Let's go to sRGB and go to view display values and then you can go to hexadecimal. If I switch to that, then what we should see if I unlock the color is you then have your hex values shown here and it's always the second two letters for each of the colors. So the hex values here would be 4185F4 preceded by a hash sign. So if I do the typical copy color as text and then I paste it into this search window then we see the hex value here, which matches the hex value up here. You get different hex values if you change the RGB profile. So the hex value in P3 is different to the one in RGB. So I don't know if we'll see that change dynamically. Yes, we do. So we see it change dynamically from P3 to sRGB to let's say Adobe RGB. Okay, typically for web design, you'll be using sRGB and the hex values here. And remember the magic key command is copy color as text, shift command C. Lock position is command L, copy color as text is shift command C. And although I haven't put it in there, copy color as an image, is Alt Command C. Finally, there's just a couple of other things I'd like to show you. Under the view, me view menu, there is an update continuously. If you unlock, of course, what happens is it's always updating anyway. So wherever I roll the cursor on the screen, it updates to those color values across the G and the O and there. So it's always updating continuously. But the little option that says this here means that if you are on a video element of the screen, then it will monitor and update that element of the screen continuously. I can't quite do that in demonstration that I'm trying to do here, but that's actually what would happen. So if you can roll it over a moving video and it will update continuously the pixels as they change in a video or a movie area. And finally, you've got to show the mouse location on the screen. So if you click on that, 
you get a dialog box at the bottom of this window here, which I've moved, um, and it shows the mouse coordinates. So as you move up to the top of the screen, it will get towards zero, 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 and it will give you the pixel dimensions as you roll elsewhere on a screen as well. So they're the mouse coordinates showing in the window just here. So I can turn that off and update continuously doesn't really need to be on. But the clever thing is make sure that you know that copy color as text is shift command C and the lock position that's critical command L when you've rolled your cursor over to a particular color press command L it will lock that color in this window and then you can use the values that are being shown in this window okay so hopefully that's been of use to you it's a fantastic tool allows you to capture those colors and use them in your next design very very easily just by copying and then pasting them into the color dialog boxes within the applications that you're designing in so i hope this has been useful for you thank you for watching this i'm going to carry on showing you more of these tools that are built within mac os so if you like this please make sure you hit the like button and subscribe and click the bell if you want notifications of further updates that I do for these videos. Thank you for watching.